Hey everybody, Mike Naso here with a Saturday night video update on the night of September 2nd. We are watching a very active tropical Atlantic. We have post-tropical cyclone Idalia, which made landfalls a powerful hurricane in the Florida Big Bend on Wednesday. It is now to the northeast of Bermuda. It brought rough conditions to that island. It is moving out. We have Hurricane Franklin, which is now post-tropical. It's out of here. It inhaled Tropical Storm Jose. We have Tropical Storm Gert, which took a long time. It developed two weeks ago tonight. It became a tropical storm. It got sheared apart by Hurricane Franklin, but it remained an entity until it regenerated, and it will soon get sucked up by what's left of Idalia. So these four systems, Idalia, Franklin, Gert, and Jose, will all kind of interact and move out to sea. We're not going to have to deal with them. Over here is Tropical Storm Katia, which strengthened pretty good today, but has since weakened, and Katia should weaken and not have any issues anymore for anybody. But the feature we're going to be watching is this tremendous tropical wave which left the coast of Africa. It is spinning, it is organizing, and it is a very high likelihood for development. We will talk about this system because this is going to be an issue down the road. Here's the latest on Tropical Storm Gert as of 11 p.m. Atlantic time, Saturday night. Gert was at 29.1 north, 53.4 west. Winds of 60. It's been resilient. Like I said, it developed two weeks ago, but we kind of forgot about it because it dissipated. But what it once was was still there. And once Franklin let up, it was able to strengthen. But now it's dealing with shear from what's left of Idalia, and it's just headed on out. And it's moving north-northeast at 6 miles per hour. Then we go way further out, and we have Katia. Tropical Storm Katia it is at 26.5 north, 31.0 west, winds of 45 miles per hour, so it's weakened somewhat. It's moving north-northwest at 16. It should dissipate far from the Azores, and we won't have to deal with it. When we take a look at the satellite, this is a great image. Here's Idalia moving to the northeast of Bermuda. Here is Gert down here. This is what's left of Franklin. It's already inhaled where Jose was. Jose's gone. And here is Katia. Notice with Katia, it looked much better organized, and then all this convection just completely collapsed. And that is a sign that it is indeed weakening. Now, the flow should move Idalia, was left of Franklin, was left of Jose, Gert, and Katia safely out to sea. They're going to be weakening. We won't have to deal with them. We already had Idalia strike the Big Bend of Florida as a very powerful hurricane. Thankfully, the others stayed away from most land areas, and they are going to move out to sea. Now that brings us to this system. Even though we don't have Idalia to worry about, or Gert, or Katia, this tropical wave that left Africa is a very high likelihood for development over the next five, six, seven days, and it should move in the general direction of the Leeward Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and areas there of the Western Atlantic Basin. Now let me tell you, there is good model agreement that this system means business. When we take a look at the satellite imagery, it's a tiny little curly cue right now, but it does have a spin to it. You could obviously see the counterclockwise rotation there. There's a lot of moisture, and it looks like this thing is going to be an issue. To say nothing of the convection still over Africa, this could do something too, but some of the models show this one moving more in the direction that Katia did. This system here, which is now designated Invest 95L, this is going to be something to watch. One of the reasons is the wind shear. Look at how favorable the wind shear is all in front of it. It's not going to deal with anything. If, if any kind of wind shear, it might be easterly shear because it's going to be pushed west so quickly. Sometimes systems like that get sheared from the east, not from the west. But that tut, the tropical upper tropospheric trough that usually has wind shear coming like this, shredding systems. Remember Hurricane Franklin had trouble organizing? There's nothing like that. This system is going to have smooth sailing as it moves towards the west or the west-northwest and very favorable conditions, not to mention very, very hot water. Now, here's the European ensembles. They have our system becoming a dangerous hurricane, 
and moving in the general area of the Northern Islands and north of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola sometime around, when is that, September 11th and 12th? Yeah, right around Tuesday, September 12th, we could be dealing with a very serious hurricane right in that area that I just circled. Now, the question then becomes, will the system turn out or strike Bermuda, kind of head out to sea, enter a weakness in the ridge of high pressure? Or does the system get trapped and continue towards the west? Some of the models here on the European ensembles want to take it continuing west. Others want to kind of pull it north. I've seen systems in the past that, hey, they're going to turn north and then they get trapped and pushed back west. We just don't know. It's a long way out. We don't even have a tropical depression or a tropical storm yet, but we could have a problem with this system. Here's the GFS ensembles. Some of them are taking it right over Puerto Rico and the Northern Islands as a strong hurricane, possibly a major hurricane. So this is a very serious thing. If you're in the U.S. Virgin Islands, if you're planning on taking a uh, September trip to the islands or Puerto Rico, start to watch this system just in case because if it made it to the islands that would probably be by September 8th or 9th so we don't have much longer than a week before we would have impact and when we look at that satellite imagery this system's cruising on along so there's a long way to watch it but you also have to have time to prepare this is the Canadian model watch what it does with our system here it is Watch it develop, move through the Northern Islands just north of Puerto Rico on track for the Turks, Caicos, and the Bahamas by the end of the run, and that would be by September 12th. So that track that it has it taking is right through some of the Northern Islands, maybe areas there of um, Barbuda, uh, St. Kitts, Nevis, uh, St. Croix, uh, any of the U.S. Virgin Islands could be impacted. Puerto Rico, the North Coast especially, and then into the Turks, Caicos, and the Bahamas. Now, again, the question becomes, is there enough of a weakness at that point to turn the system north? Does it go to Cape Hatteras? Does it go to New England? Does it turn out to sea? Does it sail right into Miami? No idea. Way too far out. Again, you're talking 240 hours out, but... We're going to watch this very carefully because this is the Canadian model and those are the GFS models and these are the European models, all of them saying we're going to deal with something very serious in that area. So we're going to watch this very, very carefully. The name list, uh, we've had uh, Katia now, so the next name is Lee. Now, Lee was the replacement name after Hurricane Lenny back in November of 1999. Back in November of 99, we actually had Hurricane Lenny move a very rare track. It was from west to east throughout the Caribbean, and it struck areas near St. Croix as a Category 4 hurricane, and it was very devastating to those islands around the U.S. Virgin Islands and the Leeward Islands, and they retired Lenny, replaced it with Lee. We used the name Lee in 2005, in 2011, and 2017, and it is the next name on the list. So we will watch because... If this system becomes Lee, the computer models seem to want to take it into a tropical storm, then a hurricane, and then a dangerous hurricane, and potentially bring it very, very close to the Caribbean islands, and maybe points further west. If it continued as current motion, it would go straight into southeast Florida. Again, it will probably move initially much more further west and south than that, and we will see if it then continues more to the northwest. We just don't know a lot of time to watch it. In the western Pacific, we had that Typhoon Buffett Hong Kong. We got another one. This is Typhoon Haikui, and it is a Category 3 system with winds of 105 knots. That's 120 miles per hour. And it's about to make landfall over areas of Taiwan. Looking at the visible satellite imagery, a very dangerous typhoon. In fact, it's moving so slow, it looks like it's strengthening, possibly stronger than 120 miles per hour. Don't be surprised if it gets up towards the equivalent in the Atlantic of a Category 4 before making landfall on Taiwan. So it's active in the Western Pacific right now. But the focus here in the United States, with Idalia gone, as of now, is going to be this little curly cue that looks rather innocuous, but could actually be 
uh, quite a problem down the road. So we're going to watch it very carefully over the next couple of days. Stay tuned to the Tropical Video Update page. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I will talk to you next time.